guys, welcome to The Ratchet Christian. My name is Esmao and I am The Ratchet Christian. Um, yeah, so welcome back guys. I'm always so excited whenever I can do a video. And today we're gonna talk about leaving the past in the past. And I don't know who this is for, but I know it's for somebody because I technically didn't even really wanna talk about it. Cause I was like, Jesus, I feel like I've already talked about something similar to this, you know, whether it was forgiving yourself or learning how to forgive others. I feel like I've definitely talked about not dwelling on the past, leaving the past in the past. And he's like, no, you're going to need to talk about it again for yourself and for other people. So here we are talking about it. Um, so to jump right into it, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you have gotten saved, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior, you are literally a new creation. You are a new creature. So all the things that you did before coming to God, those things have gone away, you know? And um, I know for me personally... Um, one of the biggest things, ugh, I don't know. So it's like, I always feel like, okay, I talk about like, you know, pretty, not like outrageous stuff, but you know, stuff that's kind of, you know, touchy and things that uh, other Christian YouTubers may not, may not touch on. And I kind of skim over the fact that I may have had a bit of like a shady past or whatever, but I'd never like really dive into it. And the Lord was like, dive into it. But I'm like, Lord, like, I don't really want to really go all the way into that he's like go into it so basically yeah with that i clung on clung on to that scripture when i first got saved you know becoming a new creation because before i really got saved i kind of used to be a little bit of a hoe not like a big hoe you know but i was like a little one but not on purpose you know like have you ever just accidentally found yourself in hoe stuff like i never went out looking for hoe activities but i just somehow some way found myself in hoe activities sometimes and i'm like how did i get here you know like this is not <laughs> where i'm supposed to be this was not my plan for tonight so yeah i was an accidental uh you know, hoe at times. But, you know, I hung on to that scripture of, you know, being a new creation in Christ because I was like, oh my gosh, now that I'm saved, like, who's really going to believe me? Who's going to buy it? Like, when God instructed me to start this YouTube channel, I'm like, Lord, people are going to talk about me. Like, oh, she's faking it. There's no way, like, she's really like a Christian now because she used to be turned up. She used to drink. Like, all these things, you know, I, I, I overplayed back and forth in my mind because I'm like, you know, I kind of used to be a little out there. You know, I wasn't a saint. But, I'm a new creation in Christ, and if you have gotten saved, so are you. So you may not have been a hoe, but maybe you may have been a whoremonger if you were a man. You may have been kind of slutty man. Um, you may have been a thief. You may have, may have been a scammer. You may have been um, somebody who robbed people. There's, I don't know whatever it is that you did, but just know that once you got saved, like Jesus already died on the cross for that. He already died on the cross for those mistakes that he knew that you were going to make. And you are literally a new creation. You are literally a new person with a new heart. And um, I wanted to talk about this because, well, I'm saying I wanted to. At first, I didn't really want to, but it's just I've been having this conversation with the Lord and he was just, you know, making it known to me that, you know, people will hold you hostage to your past. You know, you may have changed, but people always want to bring up what it is that you did, where it is that you come from, like, and in turn, you yourself may hold you hostage to your past. I know there's been times where I feel like I always have to bring up the fact that I used to drink or I used to smoke or that I used to have sex like all these things just so I can make other people feel comfortable because I don't want them to feel like I'm judging them or you know I'm an uptight Christian I want to let them know like I wasn't always like this you know I, I did come from um a rough background I didn't just wake up one day and like decide I want to be a good Christian girl like no um it took a journey to get here and I always want to share that with people but God's like you don't always have to like you know dig back into that like i just want to be the person who i am now without always having to drudge around my past of who it is that i was and it's funny because um when i first moved to la i had a roommate she was like oh i feel like you're judging me i'm like girl like you don't know me from a can of paint i literally moved here and i could have pretended like i was always like this goody two shoe you know i could have pretend like i've always been this good christian but i made a point to let you know like girl no don't worry about it you're drunk oh i used to drink oh you want to bring a guy home like i get it i've been there like always making a point to let her know like i used to be here because i don't want her to feel judged and i feel like as christians we can do that too like just kind of dredging around our past like oh I used to do this and I used to do that and Jesus is like okay you used to like let it go and just be who who it is that you are now it's only but for so long that I'm gonna keep on talking about the fact that I used to be ratchet because I'm really not in that space in my life anymore and I do want to move forward you know but um 
for the all intents and purposes. Of course, I have to discuss it every now and then, but it's like, I just want to be free to be who I am now. And I just want you to know that you are free to be who you are now. You don't always have to drudge up everything that you've always done and who you've always, um, excuse me, or who you used to be. And, um, it's okay to change, you know, it's, you've changed and that's okay. You know, some people, will, I love the saying, it's like people will look at you and say you changed, like you worked this hard to stay the same. It took a lot of work for me to change, you know, and I'm proud of that work. And people are like, oh my God, you're so different. It's like, yeah, good. I better be different because I've been trying to not be the same. So don't be afraid to change. You may lose people. People may not buy into it, but you know what? It's not for them. It's between you and God. So if it's in your past, it's in your past. Um... No, okay, so it's like I made a note because I want to definitely make sure I mentioned this. Like, I stopped being a hoe when it got cool to be a hoe. You know, like in 2019, y'all have, we, I said y'all, hoes have mascots. You know, we, we have the Cardi B anthems, Amber Rose is out there fighting for our rights. But being a hoe back in 2009, 2010, it was difficult. You know, people spread rumors about you. It, it, it was not cool. And I'm just like so annoyed because I'm like, Jesus, you really called me out of my hoe as soon as it got cool. Like I had to go through it. I feel like us old hoes, like we, we, we forged a path for you guys. You know, we made it where you could have mimosas and be a scam artist and just live your best life and have fun. Whereas before we had to lay down the foundations of being disrespected, of having to fight. And yeah, you still have that as much, but there is such thing as slut shaming now. You know, when I was 17, 18 years old in, in college, there was no such thing as slut shaming. You know, it was just like, oh, she's a thought and nobody would say anything about it. Be like, you're slut shaming her. So we've come really, really far. And I'm like, dang, you know, like I would be living my best life right now if I was still a hoe but you know Jesus came and interrupted my plans and I just want to let you know that he might interrupt your plans too and that's okay like whatever the life that I'm living now is way better than back then hoe is not life and I just want to you know in defense of Jerry and Michelle your hoeness can be deleted it can it's kind of like a credit score like if you stop adding to it it will eventually disappear and then when you put the blood of Jesus on it it's gone your hoeness can be deleted guys and you can leave it in the past um so to continue, Ezekiel uh, chapter 36 verses 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You know, once I got saved, I actually became so much more generous than what I was. You know, like I used to be not cold hearted, but I was a person in the world. I dated like how the world dated. I didn't trust people. Um, I played games. I cheat, like all these things. And then when I got saved, I actually had a conscience and started to feel bad. And so being saved and then being in a toxic relationship i was just like oh my gosh like i know i'm not supposed to be with this person but then i don't want to judge like i don't want to be like oh now that i know god i'm gonna leave you because you don't know god so i stayed in a toxic relationship longer than i should have because i now had a new heart i now had more compassion than what it is that i had before because i got before i got saved i'd be like oh done on to the next one like i don't care i remember literally telling him like when I'm done dating people, I literally like cut you off. Like I delete you out of my life. I never speak to you again. And maybe after like three or four years, we can be friends, you know? But then after I got saved, I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't just not speak to people because they offended me. I couldn't just, you know, leave things unsolved. I actually wanted to make amends and actually wanted to like not hurt people. So I say all that to say, now that you've saved, you have a new heart. So you have to move differently, you know? Um, I tell my friends all the time, there's nothing wrong with being a good person, but knowing that you're a good person and you have a good heart, you just have to have boundaries because people are looking for good people to misuse and take advantage of, you know? So now that you're a new creation and you know you have more love to give and you know that you have a, a bigger capacity for compassion, you also have need to have boundaries to make sure that people aren't taking advantage of your kindness, to make sure that people aren't um, um, using you for your goodness, you know? So, um, yeah. Like I said, you need to move differently, you know, have boundaries, uh, be kind to people, but also don't be a doormat. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read Romans 8, which I love the book of Romans. Like I have a tattoo on my back when I was a heathen that I got. It was Romans chapter 7 verses 14 through 24. And I love the, um, the book of Romans. But okay, we're going to read Romans 8. And it says, So now those who are in Christ Jesus are not judged guilty. I am not judged guilty because Christ Jesus, uh, because in Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit that brings life made me free. It made me free from the law that brings sin and death. 
The law was without power because the law was made weak by our sin, sinful selves. But God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son to earth with the same human life that others use for sin. He sent his son to be an offering to pay for sin. So God used the human life to destroy sin. He did this so that we could be right as the law said we must be. Now we do not live following our sinful selves, but we live following the spirit. Those who live following their sinful selves think only about things that their sinful selves want. But those who live following the spirit are thinking about the things that the spirit wants them to do if a person's thinking is controlled by his sinful self then there is death but if his thinking is controlled by the spirit then there is life and peace this is true because if a person's thinking is controlled by his sinful self then he is against god he refuses to obey god's law and really he is not able to obey god's law those people who are ruled by their sinful selves cannot please god but you are not ruled by your sinful selves um you are ruled by the spirit if the spirit of god really lives in you but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, then he does not belong to Christ. Your body will always be dead because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then the spirit gives you life because Christ made you right with God. God raised Jesus from death. And if the and if God's spirit is living, excuse me, in you, then he will also give you life to your uh, to your bodies that die. God is the one who raised Christ from death and he will give life to the spirit that lives in you. So my brothers, we must not be ruled by our sinful selves. We must not live the way our sinful selves want. If you use your lives to do the wrong things your sinful selves want, then you will die spiritually. But if you use the spirit, a spirit's help to stop doing the wrong things you do with your body, then you will have true life. And I love that scripture because it's just basically um, just saying like, now that you've been saved, like don't continue on sinning. You know, now that you are this new creation in Christ, you have to make an effort to not do the things that you once did. You know, before you were a slave to your sin, uh, to your sins, you were a slave to yourself. But now that you have been saved, you're a slave to um, uh, righteousness. You know, now before I was a slave to doing the wrong things, all the things I didn't want to do, that's what I did. But now I'm a slave to doing the right things. Like I said, I didn't even really want to talk about you know getting over the past because I feel like I've talked about this before. But I listen to what god tells me to do you know my body wants me to do one thing and my spirit wants me to do another before i used to listen to my body but now i listen to my spirit because um the spirit goes up and meets god my body's gonna stay down here but i have to answer for and give an account for the things that i've done in my life and so do you and so um yeah if you've done things, just know that Christ has forgiven you. And since you've been forgiven and since you are this new creation, you can't keep going on in your old ways, hanging out with the same old people, doing the same old things, going to the same old places, and then expecting your life to be different. That's not how this works. Um, so to continue on... Um, so yeah, as I was having this conversation with the Lord this week, and like I said, like we talk about some pretty outrageous things on, on my channel, but the Lord was just... I've just been thinking about like, you know, like... a abortions you know like women who have had abortions like what more what one thing would you want to like leave in your past more than an abortion you know and I'm so grateful that although I was out there you know having sex outside of wedlock I've never been put in a position where I, I have had to have an abortion you know what I mean and it's like I it's only by God's grace that I haven't because I know there's a certain point in my life where I didn't really have a relationship with God and if I had gotten pregnant by the wrong guy I probably wouldn't have kept it and I know there's so many women who have done this secretly and you know maybe this is the thing that's keeping them from coming closer to God maybe you're listening to this um God just wants you to know that he forgives you um it's not something that he's going to hold against you even that can be forgiven um there's nothing that God won't uh forgive there's nothing that Jesus hasn't covered already by dying on the cross so if you have had to um you know be in that situation just know that God forgives you you know you can leave that in the past you don't have to carry that experience with you um for the rest of your life over and over again you are a new creation you are a new creature and you are forgiven of even that thing so i just want to um yeah i don't know who that's for but it's for who it's for and it's like i'm grateful for god's grace i know it's a tough position to be in but don't let that be the thing that keeps you away from god because even that is accounted for even that god is like i just want to love on you and let you know that it's going to be okay um so yeah, and it's like I, I talk about things like this because I, whenever I was in church, like I was always wanting more. Like I always wanted somebody to just be upfront with me and tell me this is a sin, this is not a sin, this is how you stop doing this. Like I hate it. I, I'm not a person who likes to talk in circles. I don't like to beat around the bush. I like for you to not circle around my neighborhood when we're having a conversation, drive down my street, pull up into my garage, come into my house, sit in the living room and tell me exactly what it is. And so that's what I want to provide for people, you know, so I'm not trying to be raunchy. I'm not trying to be, you know, inappropriate, but I also don't want 
want there to be room for interpretation. Like I'm, I'm talking about what it is that I'm talking about. And I know that it's tough, but this is the type of stuff that keeps people in bondage. And in 2019, we're getting free, even if that means being uncomfortable, even if that means talking about pornography and masturbation, even if that means talking about racism, talking about abortion, because these are the real deep down things. You know, as the church, we can't keep talking about God's going to bless you and give you a car. God's going to bless you and give you a husband because there's things that are in the way where God may want to bless you, but you have so much sin in your life that he can't even bring it to you or the enemy is you know so busy entangling you in things that keep you from your blessings and so in order to get to those things you first have to get free and we have to get free from real life serious stuff such as this so um to continue first john 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse cleanse us from all unrighteousness did it say some no it said all unrighteousness did it say um only like the the things that most people really do no it said all unrighteousness all means all if you just confess your sins god i did this because he already saw you it's not like he was sleeping didn't see you he just wants you to acknowledge that what you did was wrong and then he saw it and then just ask him for forgiveness and then literally he's like okay i forgive you now let's repair our relationship now let's repair you now let's move forward so if we confess our sins God is just and righteous and he will forgive us of everything and everything means everything so bring it to him and then Isaiah 54 verse 4 says fear not for you will not be ashamed um yeah I'm gonna read that over so Isaiah 54 verse 4 says fear not for you will not be ashamed be not confounded for you will not be disgraced for uh, for you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more I love that scripture because I have shame in my youth you know what I mean I've done things that I like regret or you know felt shame about before I came to came to Christ but the way that I deal with that is and um I'm saying Anna but the way that I deal with that is just like I just I own my stuff like I own my stuff. There's nothing that somebody could come tell you about me that I probably haven't already said about myself you know if if somebody says, have you done this? Have you done that? Like if I did, I'm going to say, yeah, if I didn't, then I'm going to say no. And so the best way to like stop running from your past and stop reliving your, your past is to turn and face it on up to it. If you did, if you did this, then you did it, you know, be honest about it and speak your truth, live your truth. You know, before I was nervous about this YouTube channel, cause I'm like, you know, people have like spread rumors about me that I'm a slut that I'm a this and this and that I'm like how are people gonna sit here and you know listen to me talk about Jesus and Jesus is like no you talk about it yourself you know I'm not gonna leave it open for interpretation I'm gonna come and tell you that you know I used to be out there I'm gonna come and tell you that I used to smoke and I used to drink and nobody's gonna hold me in shame about that because I know I've been forgiven and nobody can hold you in shame about anything that you already know that you've been forgiven for so live in your truth walk in your truth you know um and like I said, know that you are forgiven and know that you are loved and just face your fears, face your past, stop running from it because it will eventually catch up to you. You know, what's done in the dark will always come up to the light. You know, me trying to pretend like I've been this good Christian girl the whole time, it's pointless because I'm sure people will come come with receipts and it's not necessary because these are my receipts. You can come to my YouTube channel and hear me talk about it myself. So there's that. Now I'm ready to fight. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm going to calm down. But yeah, so with that being said, you know, with you knowing that you are forgiven no matter where, whatever it is that you've done, that um, God loves you and that you need to, you know, confront your, your past head on, you need to also know that although you are loved and that you are forgiven, there are still consequences for the things that you've done, you know, like you will reap whatever it is that you sowed. So yes, when you get saved, you become a new creation, but those, your past will eventually catch up to you somehow, some way. If you used to be a scammer, yes, you may be saved, but you may have to serve some prison time. That doesn't mean God doesn't love you, but that's just, you know, the things that you sowed in your past life coming back to haunt you. You know, back in my day, when I was out in the streets, I wasn't always the most faithful person. You know, I, I had a great boyfriend that, you know, I was not the most faithful to. I ended up in this horrible, toxic relationship with this guy. And I was just like one of his many side pieces. And I know for a fact that that was my karma. You know, although I'm forgiven and God loves me and I shut down the sugar shack and I'm celibate, you know, I definitely had to reap my karma of bad relationships, of, you know, reaping all the things that I sowed, the way that I treated people, getting it back. So your past will catch up to you. You will eventually pay some type of consequence but then once that is done then just continue to sow good seeds you know I had to you put on my big girl panties and accept the fact that I'm reaping what it is that I sowed you know I'm reaping all my bad karma and now I feel like 
I think twice about what it is that I do to people because I know it's always going to come back to me, you know, where I think twice about anything that I say or do because I know eventually it's going to come out into the light. And so just after you reap all the, the bad things that you did, just sow good fruits. You know, I don't want to sow anything that I don't want to see back. I don't play games with people because I don't want people to play games with me. I don't lie on people because I don't want people to lie on me. Like, I just try to put out into the world the things that I want to see. And um, you should do the same. So once you've owned up to your past and you've, you know, taken the repercussions of it moving forward, just do positive things. Plant positive fruits. Be around positive people. Make positive choices so that you can have a positive outcome in life. And so that when you're thinking about your past, you don't have negative memories. You're not scared of, oh, who's going to come and put me on blast it's like there's nothing to put me on blast about for now because i live in the light there is no dark and shadowy areas of my life you know so that feels good excuse me and so to sum this all up and to bring this plane in for a dramatic landing um psalms uh 103 verses 8 through 12 says the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love he will not always chide nor will he keep his anger forever he does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far does he remove our transgressions from us i love that as far as the east is from the west that's how our far God puts your sins away from us. The most horrible thing that you think God will never forgive you for, not only does he forgive you for it, but he removes it far from you. You know what I mean? It's not like you always have to keep on coming back and apologizing for it. God's like, I got you. I forgave you. Don't even think about it. It's over there on the other side of the earth. I'm not even thinking about it because I'm seeing who you are now and seeing who you are in Christ because you're a new creation. When God looks at you now, he sees you as white as snow. He looks at you and he sees Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you in that, you know, and to just encourage you to be present in your life right now. I know it's very easy to live in the past and that's not to, not everybody has had a bad past. You know, your past may have been so good that you can't get over it. You may have been a star athlete and you know, you're still 25. Think about when you were in high school and you got that touchdown or you may have been homecoming queen, you know, and so you're still stuck in that moment of your life. Like you can still be stuck in the past no matter if it was good or if it was bad and it can be unhealthy for you. You know, the best place to be is in the present, not in the future because it causes anxiety. Um, I got that from my past book um or in the in, in in the past because it causes depression you need to be present here right now it is friday um march 1st 2019 and i'm happy with who i am as a person you know i'm 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 grateful for the things that God has done for me and I know that I have a future. I know that he has plans for me and his plans are to prosper me and to give me a hope in a future. And I know that God doesn't hold me, uh, you know, in, in bondage or in hostage to anything that I did before I knew him. He's not holding me uh, uh, accountable for the things that I did before I got saved and he's not doing that to you either. So just, yeah, know that you were forgiven and let go of the past dude. Like just be in the present, like people want to hold you to your past that's their business what people have to say and think about you has literally nothing to do with you so whatever so yeah guys that was a lot i know it's okay we're gonna take a deep breath but i just want to give you guys an opportunity that if you're watching this and you're not a christian and you're not saved i just want to you know give you an opportunity to get saved and it's just as simple as saying jesus i give you my life you know, it's really that simple. Just say out loud, Jesus, I give you my life and just invite him into a relationship with you. Invite Jesus into your life and just ask him to guide you and lead you into all truth. If you don't want to live in your past anymore, if you want to be set free, just say, Jesus, I give you my life. And, you know, you and him will start a relationship and a conversation moving on from there. And if you want to talk further, if you want even more advice, if you need prayer, you know, my DMs are always open. So, yeah, guys, I love you and I appreciate you and I will see you next time. Bye. Have a great weekend, too. It's um, Friday, so make good choices. Not choices that you would make in the past, but choices that you're going to make for your future. Ooh, did you catch that? Bye, guys.